Okay, so the first thing we want to work on is bootstrapping our Express application. Uh, so let's go ahead and I'll open up my terminal and I will go ahead and go to expressjs.com and check out the generator. So if you don't have the generator, I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed, run this command, npm install express generator g. That's a global installation of the npm package for the express generator. And now what we want is to create an express application. So we're going to use this command right here, express dash dash view equals. We're not going to use pub, we'll use ejs. Uh, I know a lot of you are familiar with ejs, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And then we'll name the application. So we will come back over here and change pug to EJS and make this a little bit bigger so you can all read it. Okay, so the command is express dash dash view equals EJS, and then we'll change it from my app to um, surf shop. Hit enter. So now if we ls. Oh, we have to CD into Surfshop. Now if we LS, go ahead and clear this out so you can see better. We have app.js, package.json. Uh, it already has a package.json in there for you, so npm uh, has already been initialized. We can cat package.json. We can see that uh, Surfshop is there. By the way, if that was a little too fast for you, the cat command is just a way to print out the contents of a file. Okay, so the name is Surfshop. This is JSON we're looking at. We have some dependencies. It already has body parser, cookie parser, debug, EJS, Express, Morgan, Surf, Favicon. Uh, what else do we need? Right off the top of my head, um, we need to do an npmi s. If you're using the newest version, you don't have to use s. That's a capital S, by the way. So this is npm install dash dash save, and we're going to install mongoose for sure. And passport, that's a definite. So both of those for sure. And then I'm gonna install Locust because we'll be doing plenty of debugging. Uh, they have debug in there, I've never used it, so I'm not really sure what that entails. So all that's installed, I'm gonna do an npm i dash d locus. So the dash d stands for development dependencies. So that way it doesn't get put onto Heroku. So we'll let that install. Cool. npmi d, we're going to do another development one for .env. This is going to allow us to store any secret keys for APIs, any sensitive information into the um, env files as an environment variable. And so that's just for development. Once we get to deployment, which we will be deploying this application, then we will export all of those environment variables to Heroku um, and go from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an npm i get our no modules folder. We already have no modules because I did these npm i's for .env, but it doesn't have express and body parser and cookie parser. And I am running out of disk space. That's horrible. So as soon as this video is over, I have to fix that. Uh, something about some vulnerabilities, a couple moderate vulnerabilities. We'll do a npm audit fix if you get this error. And they need to update the generator to fix that, but um, that's fine. Okay, so it fixed everything, and now if we open our code in our code editor, I'm using Sublime. You're welcome to use anything you want. Make this larger so you can see it. If we open app.js, okay, a little bit smaller, you can see they have all this code in here. Uh, first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that Generator does use ES5, which a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, if you don't know ES6, it's fine. The features that I'm going to use in this application, I will explain to you. Uh, I know a lot of ES6. I don't know all of it. There's new stuff coming out in you know 2017, 2018, and stuff for next year that's being worked on. So uh, I'll be trying to stay cutting edge as much as possible. Um, and there might even be some times where I look up some stuff to see what the new stuff is we can use. Okay, so first and foremost, we have all these vars in here. So I'm going to select them all, and we're going to change them to const. Okay, None of these should be changed, therefore we use const as opposed to let. So const just stands for constant, 
It's the same thing as var, sort of. Um, basically, all these variables are not going to be changed. Okay, so our view setup is set up for the views folder, which we have right here. We have routes. We do not have a folder for models, and we do not have a folder for our controllers or our middleware. So I'm going to go ahead and make dir, and that's just make directory mkdir, and we'll do controllers. And I think we can do multiple folder names at the same time, so we'll do models and middleware. There, we have them right here. Good deal. Okay, so scrolling down, we have, let's see here. We have, they give us two sets of routes, one for our index, so like our welcome page, our home page, landing page, things like that, and then another one for our users. So um, we could use that for like our profile. And we, we, a lot of times you'll see like slash login and slash register. That's fine. You can also do slash users login slash users register. It's up to you. Uh, this 404 and 4 to error handler is just, just basic uh, middleware in Express for allowing you to just pass an error to the next uh, middleware function and eventually it'll uh, go ahead and put that on the screen so it's good in development we can we can change it later um, to where it gives us some more useful errors we'll use like rect out flash or whatever to flash the errors to the user and then uh, log whatever we need to log to the console for the admin for debugging so down here is our actual error handle handler uh, so it sets local variables for message puts that message on the screen like I just said right now it's checking to see what the environment is if it's in development etc uh, and then it renders the error page, which is a view right here. And it's really simple. It's just a H1 with a message, a status, and a stack. So that's helpful for us during development. And then once we're out of development, we will, like I said, we'll use flash messages. Okay, so in our views, we have an index.ejs. It gets a EJS local variable passed into it for title. And then that title gets put to two more places, so it's kind of excessive. But um, so in our routes, we have index.js, and right here it renders the index view that's down here, index.ejs, the one we were just looking at. And it passes in a local variable called title, and it's just calling it express. So if we were to fire up our application right now, uh, I'm going to use no daemon for this course. If you don't know about no daemon, really simple, just npmi g no daemon and once it's installed basically what it does is it runs node app.js and it's just going to keep restarting our server every time we um, make a change to the server files so you could edit your client files it's fine you don't have to restart it but whenever you're editing stuff like app.js and models and routes and uh, the controllers etc then it's going to want you to restart so in order to automate that process, we use node daemon, and you can do it on app.js explicitly, but it's also looking for the main file in our package.json. So again, if you look at package.json, there's two files in here with the name package now. There's a package lock, and then there's package.json. We're concerned with package.json. So then uh, main file in here somewhere, it doesn't have a main file. The generator does it a little bit differently. So let's see what happens when we run a daemon. So it actually runs the uh, start script. So I'll run it again. And you can see it's running node bin www. So you, may, you haven't seen this before uh, if you're coming from Colt's course, but basically inside the bin folder, we have a www file. And inside of it, we are requiring the application. You may have noticed down at the bottom here, we're doing a module.exports app. So this all that's happening here every time you do a dot set or dot use etc you are configuring the express instance the application instance of express and then when you export that application it can be imported here and then they have a bunch of extra stuff they put in here they say okay you're either using process.env.port like if you're on Heroku or maybe on C9 or you're using port 3000 if you're working locally so it sets the port and then it listens on the port uh, and so 
you could change all this manually if you want to we'll go ahead and leave it um, down here we have the on listening function it tells you we're listening on and then bind which is the address string it has the port in it etc okay so we are listening on port 3000 so if we go to localhost 3000 here is our very simple express application so we have just bootstrapped and I'm not talking about the design framework the CSS HTML framework I'm talking about when you very quickly take something from nothing to working with a bunch of boilerplate code uh, we have just bootstrapped our application okay so before we go any further getting more errors about my low disk space I'll have that fixed in the next video so that won't be popping up uh, we're gonna cancel out of here and do a git init if you don't know anything about git check out my free git course um, I'll put a link in the description below it's like an hour and a half you can run through it really fast and or you can just follow along I'm gonna I can kind of explain what I'm doing so git init is initializing a git repository in our surf shop folder and so now our code is being tracked and that way we can basically make these little checkpoints that say hey I'm, I'm saving right now kind of like when you save a file in, in Microsoft Word and you're saying this is a point that I want to be able to come back to if something goes wrong okay so we can check our, check our git status you may see me using some shortcuts like GST uh, these are shortcuts aliases that are included with uh, oh my ZSH and ZSH the shell flavor that I'm using a lot of you are probably using the bash terminal um, I'll probably link to like a ZSH tutorial if you want to get that set up not a big deal either way just know that GST is git status so here's all the new stuff one thing we need for sure is a file called git ignore oh, I got an upset baby and so in git ignore we're gonna add our .env file which doesn't actually exist yet so we'll touch .env and then one more thing we'll put is the node modules directory okay so I'm going to clear this out and do a GST and now you'll see that it doesn't show node modules even though it shows it over here and it doesn't show .env because it's ignoring both of those and the reason we're doing that is because package.json has all the information we need about all the folders and files and everything that's installed inside of node modules so then when we put it on github and we pull it down later or someone that we're working with pulls it down or we upload it to Heroku and Heroku looks inside package.json and it installs everything the installation comes from the information that we have inside of package.json so no matter who's pulling it whether it's Heroku or another local developer or yourself you can always get node modules created you don't have to have all the extra baggage and take up disk space on a Heroku server or on uh, the github right off the bat so we're ignoring that stuff and of course like I said before for the .env those are environment variables that is going to be a bunch of uh, sensitive information that we want to protect and, and keep away from prying eyes so we're not going to put that on the cloud anywhere it's just local to our application and so that's why we hide it so that's our status we can get add dot that adds everything you can check the status again everything's green and go ahead and move this over here so we'll commit it with git commit dash m is for the message that we're going to put in here and we'll just call it initial commit or you could call it bootstrapping express something like that okay so we have our initial commit in place and we are good to go for bootstrapping so uh, that's it for bootstrapping of the express application just getting all the basics set up uh, what we'll do is we'll go over to here and go back to our Trello board and so currently doing bootstrap our express application we'll put that into QC and so we'll just run through and quality check everything real quick again we'll run the daemon to start the application up and this goes back here and this is the home page it's working as expected there's already some pre-made styles in here uh, we will be getting rid of those in a latter video but you can see they have images, nothing there, JavaScript, nothing there, style sheets, style.css. And they're just setting some padding on the body with the font, um, with some backup fonts. So we're going to be using 
the bootstrap design framework again not to be mistaken with the action of bootstrapping application but we will we'll, we will be using um, Twitter bootstrap to style our application so we'll worry about that in a latter video so that's it if we go back to our Trello board then we can put this in done and we can be we can begin focusing on the next thing in the next video we'll see you then thanks a lot